In this video, I'll show you how to configure Audio Swift in Mixer mode inside Pro Tools. The first step is to select the DAW that we're going to work with. Launch Audio Swift before launching Pro Tools. Go to Preferences and then click the Mixer tab. Audio Swift creates three virtual MIDI ports. In Mixer mode, Audio Swift 1 or Port 1 is used for your primary DAW. Audio Swift 2 or Port 2 is for your secondary DAW in case you work with another one like Logic Pro. Audio Swift 3 is only used with the rest of controller modes. In this case, we are only working with Pro Tools, so we are going to select it as our primary DAW on Port 1. Close the window. The second step is to tell Pro Tools that we want to use Audio Swift as a control surface. Go to Setup, MIDI, and click MIDI Input Devices. Here, enable the Audio Swift MIDI ports. Click Setup again, go to Peripherals, and click the MIDI Controllers tab. Over Type, choose UI. On Receive From, select Audio Swift if Pro Tools is going to be your primary DAW. If it isn't, choose Audio Swift 2 instead. Over Send To, select the same port of Receive From. Click OK. Now go to Pro Tools, Preferences, and click the Mixing tab. Under the Group Controllers, check the first three boxes. These settings here are useful when moving through the tracks while using Audio Swift on Pro Tools so I recommend to enable them. Everything is set up. Now go to Audio Swift and let's open the console window. I'm going to click the start so the window will always be on top. Make sure you're on mixer mode. At the bottom bar, there is a menu where you select the current DAW you want to control. These are the same two DAWs that you set before at the preferences window, and you can switch between them. At the right, it shows if Audio Swift can write automation or not in Pro Tools. You turn it on by hitting the letter A in your keyboard. The middle area shows the current view you are working on, with the group of parameters you can control with the trackpad. In this case, I am the first view, and I can control a fader plus the solo, mute, and arm record button. To learn the sounds over the trackpad, let's open the trackpad window. In this utility window, we'll see where are our fingers, and we can know the size of each zone in our trackpad. With a little practice, moving through the zones will be easy to you. The left and right areas of the trackpad are for changing between the views, and moving from one track to the other by just tapping the trackpad with only one finger. The middle section is where you control the desired parameter, and it depends on the view you have chosen. Go to the first track in your project. Turn on the console with a four fingers tap. Select view one by tapping the number one. To move the feather of the selected track, use the tip of one finger and slide it up or down inside the feather area. The corresponding feather will move on screen. Notice that the movements are relative, meaning that it doesn't matter if you begin at the bottom of the trackpad or at the top level, the feather will start moving from its last position following your finger direction. Also notice that once you start moving inside the feather zone, you won't need to worry if you accidentally get out of the zone. The selected feather will still move. When you finish, press the escape key or double tap the bottom right corner. It's a good practice to turn off the console right away when you finish using the controller to avoid moving a feather when you really want to move the mouse pointer instead. Let's turn on the console again. If you press the option key in your keyboard, when moving the fader, it will reset to its default value of 0 dB. If you keep pressed the command key, the fader will move more slowly for fine tuning. You can also change the sensitivity of the fader by going to Preferences, Mixer tab, and move this slider horizontally. To solo the track, tap with one finger over the letter S. To mute the track, tap over the M. To arm for record the track, tap over the R. If you need to disable, for example, all the solo buttons on several tracks, keep pressed the Option key and tap the S. This also works for the mute and arm record button. To control the next track, as you saw here, tap over the left and right triangles. If you need to do a big jump to another track, 
you have two options. By tapping over the triangles while pressing the control key, it will move to the first track of the next A channels bank. The color lines at the bottom will show you where the bank moves. From here, you can tap the triangles again to move one track at a time. The second option is by turning off the console. Scroll with your trackpad to the desired track and select it with a click. Then keep pressing Ctrl Shift and click again the desired track. This will cause the A channel bank to jump to the selected track. Turn on the console again and start moving the fader. You can click any track that is inside the A channel bank to control it. But to control a track outside the bank, you will need to use the Ctrl Shift method to move the bank first and then select the track. This will avoid moving another channel instead of the one you need to control. Let's see another views. Turn on the console and tap over view number 2. You now have access to the fader plus the panning. Move up your finger inside the pan zone and the knob will turn to the right. Move down and it will turn to the left. To set the panning to the center, keep pressing the control key and move the panning. To control the right pan knob of a stereo channel in Pro Tools, with the console on, press the letter P in your keyboard. The word pan will start to blink at the console. Now you can move the right knob. Press the letter P again to return to its normal state. Now tap over the number 3. View 3 lets you move two tracks at the same time. I tend to use my index and ring fingers for this. Tap over the left and right triangles and it will jump to the next two tracks. Press the Option key and the fader will be set at 0 dB. Press the Command key for fine tuning. I have shown you the first three basic views in mixer mode. There is one more. View 4 is for the sense and is accessible by using a one finger tap over the bottom right area of the trackpad. But before we need to enable it at the preferences window, mixer tap. Click here to enable the sense. The master fader and jog wheel are not currently supported in Pro Tools. Close this window. Turn on the console. Tap only once over the bottom right area where the star is and you'll select the sense view. Remember that if you do a quick double tap in this area, instead of changing to the view, you'll turn off the console. The console window will show the number of the sense you are controlling on the selected track. With Audio Swift, you can control the first five cents of the track in Pro Tools. Move your finger over this zone to set the level of the scent. Press the Command key for fine tuning. Press the Option key while moving and the fader will be set to its default volume. Tap over the On and Off button and the scent will be enabled or disabled. To move to another scent, tap over the Up and Down triangles. Tap over the right and left triangles to go to the next track and set its sense levels. It's time to talk about the transport controls. In Audio Swift, there are several keyboard shortcuts that are used for transport control when the console is on or when the console is the key window on screen. You can either use them or if you prefer, you can use the regular transport shortcuts in your DAW and then turn on the console for controlling the faders, panning, and so on. Like in your DAW to play the music, use the spacebar. Press it again and the playhead will pause. You can change the behavior of the spacebar to let the playhead return to its initial position and start playing again by going to the preferences window, mixer tab, and uncheck where it says spacebar works as place pause button. The letter from Q to Y in your keyboard are for the rest of the transport controls. Q is for rewind. W is the stop button, E is another play button, however this one won't pause like the spacebar does, the R is the record button, T is for enable the cycle mode, and Y is fast forward. If you have a MacBook Pro with touch bar, you will also see the transport controls displayed on it. It's good to mention that once you have configured the mixer mode in your DAW, both touch bar and keyboard transport controls are also accessible when you're working on the trigger, scale, and XY controller modes. With AudioSwift, you can automate the faders, panning, and sense. 
First select in your DAW an automation mode. I'm going to select touch. Turn on the console and hit the letter A in your keyboard to allow AudioSwift to write automation in Pro Tools. At the bottom right of the console, you'll see that the auto on will be enabled. Hit play and start moving a fader. Once you release the finger, the fader will return to its original position. You can even automate two faders at the same time. Faders and sends in touch mode will work this way. Panning, on the other hand, will return to its initial position if you stop moving your finger and even if you haven't released it from the trackpad. Use another automation mode if you want to leave the pan on its new position. If your Mac goes to sleep, it could happen that the controllers don't work right when you start working in your Mac again. When this happens, go to Setup, Peripherals, MIDI Controllers tab, and then just click OK. This will let Pro Tools recognize AudioSwift again. That's all for this tutorial. Please watch the rest of videos on how to use AudioSwift in other controller modes. Thanks for watching.